Hey, what's up, Javon here. Today, September 12, 2018, Apple has announced some new products. Gather around at the Steve Jobs Theater. This is a store-bought pineapple, and I'm gonna be regrowing him and I'll be updating at every Apple event, so it takes a while to create, to make a new pineapple. Subscribe and get updates on Pineapple Bob. What's weird is I have to cut off his head to make new bobs. The new iPhones, Tim Cook is amped. We're going to take iPhone 10 to the next level. I'm excited to show you what is by far the most advanced iPhone we have ever created. To tell you more about today's event, I'm gonna call upon Memojivan. Memojivan. Thank you. Welcome to the Steve Jobs Theater. Thanks, Javon. The new iPhones are here. There are three different versions. The first one is the iPhone 10s. 10, not X, not XS, 10. The iPhone 10s. What's new about it? They boast a new durable glass. It's got new colors, gold, silver, space gray. It uses a 5.8 Super Retina display, which is OLED. Both OLED displays, both a million to one contrast ratio. They're HDR displays. There's a new speaker system in here with wider stereo sound. There's also now stereo mic recordings, so get ready for a new crop of ASMR videos. Face ID, that's been updated. I think a lot of people take this, uh, I don't think that many people understand how much of a feat that really was to fit all that technology into a, a product that fits right in your pocket. And now with the new iPhone XS and the XS Max, Face ID has been updated. It now works faster. They both have a lot of the same features, like the updated Face ID, improved cameras with larger sensors, a smart HDR feature. We'll actually take some stunning photos without even retouching, thanks to the new A12 Bionic chip, making multiple processes in the background. The A12 Bionic chip is crazy. What the team has done is truly, truly breakthrough. It's called the A12 Bionic. It's a seven nanometer chip that's unheard of and it allows for some very powerful computing. It's cameras, so a big thing that Phil Schiller was talking about with the iPhone cameras was bokeh, or bokeh as he pronounces it. Bokeh. Is that the depth of field can be changed after taking the photo. Now he claims that this is the first of any kind of camera, but I actually own cameras that do this. This is done after you've taken it. This has not been possible in photography of any kind of camera. There's this camera company that never really quite made it but they had what was called light field technology, or light ray. They use light rays, light field. Now I forgot, it's been so long. So this device right here is a Lytro camera. It's got the magnetic cover. This is an old camera, and it looks like a telescope. There's one button up top to take a picture. Of course, uh, this thing is dusty and not charged, so I can't turn it on right now, but it uses a micro USB charging. There you go, right in the bottom. And what it does is, did I just break that? Once you take a picture, it'll show up in the back and you can tap on the area you want to be in focus. And within the software, it would allow you to change the aperture. What it did, what it actually did was inside here, there's a bunch of different lenses that shoot different types of pictures. And it also would allow you to uh, shift focus or what should I say? Almost like a 3D parallax. You can go around the subject. This was the first version, and this is the second. Let's see if I can turn this on. Nope. But, so they made this other camera, and this was the end of them. They got out of the photography business and went into video, until eventually that died out for them too. So, I don't know. I don't know what Apple means by that, or what Phil Schiller means by that. Because they definitely were cameras that existed. Maybe what he meant was, never been a camera like this, on a smartphone. These cameras were gonna be cool. They didn't end up being cool. I like the idea of being able to drag around the image and kind of shift the dimension. Is that the right word? Anyway, dual SIM. Do people care about dual SIM? Some people do. Most people won't need to. Why do you need dual SIM? Well, you can have two phone numbers, maybe one for business, one for work, one to cheat on your wife with, one to cheat on your husband with. Well, that's, that's four. But you know, you know, you know what I mean. You can interchange. You can have two numbers to cheat on your spouse with. 
Or maybe you just want to buy a different plan. Maybe uh, 118T here in America. Maybe you want to, what's the one in Japan called? Maybe something in Japan. Maybe you want a Japan Japanese SIM. So that way you can have both phone numbers and maybe you travel a lot and you need new, more numbers. So the way they're doing it is it's built in using an eSIM. My iPad Pro uh, has LTE and actually has an eSIM in it. So that's already been on devices before, but now it looks like the software is gonna make it a lot easier to use two SIMs. And in China, where eSIM is, I guess, not allowed yet, they built a double tray, which easily, smart move, <laughs> very simple and it does the job. So you can just pop two SIMs in there, no big deal. Okay, but there is a third phone. So the third phone is called the iPhone XR. And at first you would think, oh, okay, it's just like the 5C from back in the day. But the 5C was like, a, it was made of plastic and you know, the processor was previous generation. The iPhone XR, uh, okay, before I go any further, let me just, let me just stop real quick. Number one, I have a question. Does it have Face ID? I'll, I'll answer that in a second. There's a bunch of colors actually. Uh, they are black, white, red, yellow. No, red, yes. Black, white, is that what they call them? Black and white? I don't think they ever call it black. It's, it's probably space gray. Um, yellow, coral, blue, and product red. I'm always uh, biased to product red. It looks really cool. So it has a 6.1 inch LCD display which they call Liquid Retina, I guess, because they uh, Apple created what they call the best LCD display ever on a smartphone. So they named it themselves called the Liquid Retina. It actually has the A12 Bionic chip from the iPhone XS and the XS Max, the same chip. Are people losing their minds about this? I mean, it, I, the keynote just ended, so I haven't looked online about anything. But before we find out the price, the question earlier was, does it have Face ID? Yes, and not the iPhone 10 Face ID. It has the updated Face ID from the 10s and the 10s Max. It has Face ID, and there's a True Depth camera system, the same True Depth camera system, an iPhone 10s and 10s Max. The camera, okay, there's one less camera, but it's the same exact camera and lens from the iPhone 10s Max and 10s. So it's the wide angle. There's two. There's two cameras and two lenses on the iPhone XS and XS Max. One telephoto and one wide angle. So the wide angle is what we're getting on the XR. All right, tell me the price already, right? What's the price? It's $749. Now, I don't know, but to me that sounds really good for the fastest processor chip, the fastest chip ever on a smartphone. Really, the only difference I'm seeing in the 10R versus the new 10S and 10S Max, there's no OLED display, it's LCD. Okay, fine, fine. I didn't check to see if it has wireless charging. I'll put that, then, I'll put that up in the comments if I find out whether it does or not. No 3D touch, fine. They have a thing what they call haptic touch, which you just, I guess you tap a button and you'll feel the, uh, the haptic response, just like a 3D touch, but there actually is no force pushing force 3D touch. Haptic touch. So to get to the camera from the home screen, you just press on it, you feel a haptic tap, and you're taken right to the camera. This is similar technology to what we do with the trackpad and the MacBook Pro that we all love so much. Fine. So let's talk about release dates. The 10s and the 10s Max, they release on... Start pre-ordering on Friday, September 14th, and they'll ship a week later, September 21st. The iPhone 10R is later on in October. October 19th, and it'll start to ship a week later than that, October 26th. Sounds pretty cool. Now, do I want the big iPhone? I don't know. The iPhone XS to me really fits my hands really well. I can reach every corner of it and fits in my pocket nicely. I'll have to look at it at the, the Max or Plus. Apparently, it's the same size as the Plus phones, which to me was a little, a little big. So I don't know. I'll, I'll have to see it. The XR. Uh, it's not for me, but it, for people that just can't swing that $1,000 for the iPhone XS or the XS Max, I think the XS Max is $1099. I'll list the prices up uh, digitally here somewhere. I would get the XS, 
But the 10R for people who are looking for a more affordable option, I mean, this one right here, if you're gonna get a phone this year and you wanna save some bucks, the, uh, that's a good phone to get. I mean, it's got all the new tech in it. The only thing you're really missing out is one lens. Uh, there's no OLED display. I mean, with trade-offs, I mean, that's not, maybe that's not too big of a deal for some people. So that's an interesting lineup for the iPhone 10 line, the Apple Watch Series 4. What's new about the Apple Watch? The Apple Watch has been given a facelift. This is the next generation of the Apple Watch. The screens are larger with curved edges and a thinner profile. And with this increased watch size, it allows uh, the new watch to display a multitude of information at a glance, which I like. Right now, I currently use a Siri face, but I'm really digging this one. There's a lot of stuff I can see right away just as I raise my wrist. Uh, the sound on my Apple Watches, I've had the Series 0 and I currently own the Series 2. I skipped 1 and 3. They've always been a little too quiet, just a little too quiet. So the new version, Series 4, claims that it has a much louder speaker. Okay, good, because it's just a little too quiet. And I think that louder speaker will be useful with the new walkie-talkie feature that will be on watchOS 5. Fall detection. They added a new accelerometer and gyroscope. The watch can now detect a fall, a trip, or a slip. When you experience one of those things, the Apple Watch will automatically prompt if you want to call emergency services or not. And if it detects that you're motionless, it will automatically call emergency services. And that can really help out some people. ECG, electrocardiogram. I don't know what that is, but a bunch of people cheered in the audience, so I guess it's cool. An electrocardiogram. <laughs> And it looks like this ECG thing, you can just do whenever you want on the Series 4. Apparently a first for consumers uh, at a consumer level. And this is the first ECG product offered over the counter directly to consumers. Overall, the Series 4 seems to have some really important health features that can potentially save many lives. I know people who dislike Apple may scoff at the idea of uh, this device saving lives, but I don't think it's anything to laugh at. Just wearing this device may help people live longer and healthier lives. And it's already proven that it can get people active. And now more than ever, it can empower people to learn more about their health. The Apple Watch Series 4 is available September 21. So a few more questions. Where's AirPower? Where's the AirPower mat? Apple announced an AirPower mat, which would charge your iPhone, your Apple Watch Series 3, and your AirPods with an optional accessory. It got delayed and delayed and delayed and still not here. Where is it? Okay, a couple of updates on iOS 12. iOS 12, it will be releasing September 17, and that brings a lot of security features and other features like this. Huh? Huh? Well, the face and the tongue. So, Memoji, since I am Memoji Vaughn, you can create your own face and actually track it using Face ID. It's so cool. I mean, you've already, you've already been seeing it for a while, but you've already made it this far. But, and tongue detection is, <laughs> How many times have you tried that on any other app? It never works, right? So that's, <laughs> that's cool. Are you gonna get a new iPhone? 10S, 10S Max, 10R maybe? Subscribe and hit that notification bell to follow along and see what happens next with Pineapple Bob and for future Apple videos. I'm Mimo Javon and with Javon. <laughs> and uh, thanks for hanging out. Peace.